Okay, we're going to continue on with our crash course in linear algebra. So um, the next topic we're going to cover is P norms, also known as LP norms. Um, so these are norms of vectors. So norm, another way of thinking about them is length, right? So um, in general, the P norm of a vector X is defined to be um, this expression here. So this is how we write down the P norm. And then the P norm is defined to be the summation of each of the components raised to the power of P. And then after you sum them up, you raise the entire thing to the power of one over P. Maybe it looks a bit mysterious, but I think many of you have seen something similar. Um, the common norms may look more familiar to you guys. Um, so the L1 norm, uh, is given is so sometimes it's just called the one norm or Manhattan norm. It's just a sum of the absolute values of all the components. The L2 norm, which is the familiar Euclidean norm or the Euclidean distance or length, that's given by the sum of squares of, of all the components and then square root the result, right? S square root is the same as the uh, taking the uh, taking the entire expression to the power of one over two. Another common norm is the L infinity norm or the max norm. So basically, uh, the, infinity, the infinity norm is just the maximum of the absolute values of all the components. So here's some illustration of the different norms. Maybe we can begin with the two norm. So in the two norm, um, on, on this graph, we have basically concentric circles of different colors. And then we have highlighted um, kind of the one norm, uh, the ring of one norm, right? So the ring basically represents all the vectors that have a one norm. Sorry, that ha all the vectors that have a two norm of one. Gets a bit confusing to say sometimes. Okay, and then as you go radially outwards, we have increasing norm or increasing two norm. On the top, we have the one norm. The red, uh, the red diamond is the set of vectors which have a one norm of one. So you can kind of see that the one norm kind of has a different shape compared to the two norm. And then when P varies from one to two, the shape uh, also varies as well. At the bottom, we have the infinity norm, which um, the kind of the, the set of vectors that have a, an infinity norm of one actually lies on a square. Okay, and then as you um, as you go from infinity norm down to two norm, the square's corners get rounded until you get to a circle. Okay, so, um, so this is the most general definition of the P norm, and then these are the most common ones. If you look at these diagrams, you can kind of see that uh, the one norm is always greater than or equal to the two norm, which is always greater than or equal to the infinity norm. The way you can see that is um, if you imagine overlaying all of these plots on top of each other, you will see that some, for example, if we compare the two norm to the one norm, some of the points which have a two norm of one, let's say this point, would actually lie outside of the diamond, meaning that this point would actually have a one norm that is greater than one. Right? You can do the same similar argument for infinity and two. For example, if I just pick this point near the corner of the square, the same point on this plot would actually lie a bit outside of the circle, meaning that a point with an infinity norm of one can, be, uh, can have a two norm that is larger than one. Okay, so that's this inequality here. 